Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 5, Lesson 1, Identify Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine whether or not a relation is a function by identifying the number of outputs assigned to each input. Let's learn relations and functions. A mathematical relation exists when two mathematical values are related in some way. Usually we see it with x and y. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. So here we have our ordered pairs. We're very familiar with seeing them as coordinate points. They're also called ordered pairs. The input is the x coordinates, while the output is going to be the y coordinates. And relations can be shown in any of the four ways seen here. And if you look closely, all of them are representing the same sets of coordinates. If we say these ordered pairs are our original coordinates, negative 2 and 3, x and y, we can see that same thing is written here, just split apart in x and y. Down in our mapping, which has an arrow pointing from the input to the output, we can see that negative 2 points to 3. So that would form the same coordinate pair. And we can see over here on our graph, there is a coordinate at negative 2, 3. All four of these are just represented in different ways, but they give the same information. And it's going to be very helpful for you if you can recognize that they do show the same information and you're able to go between different formats. A function is a specific type of relation that assigns exactly one output to each input. So here we can see we have an example of a function and of not a function. If we look closely, the input, the arrows that come from each number, each input only goes to one output. So this is a function because each value of the input is paired with exactly one output value. Compare this to something that is not a function. We can see here that this number, 2, it goes to 1 and it goes to something else. It goes to 3. So it had two different output values, making it no longer a function. This would be like if you pushed a 2 button on a vending machine, and sometimes it gave you a 1, and sometimes it gave you a 3. That wouldn't be right. If you pushed the Sprite button on a soda machine, sometimes you get Coke, sometimes you get Sprite, probably not going to say that it's functioning. So the input goes to exactly one output. If it goes to more than one thing, then it is not a function. Let's, Let's learn. learn. Identifying, Identifying functions, functions using, using mapping, mapping diagrams. diagrams. One way we can determine if something's a function is using this mapping diagram that we just saw in the top part of the learn. If we're looking at our map diagram, it's super obvious to see that the input should only point to one output. If it's not a function, as I just said, the number can only point to one thing. So here we have one pointing to three and to five. Now, you may wonder or notice sometimes you might have more than one number pointing to the same thing. Like this 5 has two different things pointing to it. That's okay to have more than one thing pointing to the same output. You can have more than one button on a vending machine for the same brand of soda. They just can't give you something different each time you push it. So 1 points to both 3 and 5, and since it points to more than one output, it is not a function. Example 1. Identify functions using mapping diagrams. Determine whether the relation is a function. Explain. So here we're given a mapping diagram that shows the input pointing to what the output would be. To figure this out, we need to check each input value and make sure that they're only pointing to one output or they're mapping to one output. Right away, we can see that one goes to one and one goes to negative one. So we have our input of one that's mapped to more than one output, this is not a function. Check your understanding. Determine whether this relation is a function. Explain. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said this is not a function, but it's because of this input value of four. It's pointing to negative 5 and pointing to negative 7. You might be seeing this negative 11 here, but actually that's okay. 6 only points to negative 11, so that's fine. 8 only points to negative 11. 
also fine. It's this 4 here that's the problem. It points to negative 5 and to negative 7. Because the input went to more than one output, it is not a function. Let's learn. Identify functions using tables. Tables can also be used to represent relations and functions. So the mapping diagram we just saw, that was one way we can represent our relations and functions. Here's a second way. To determine whether a relation in a table is a function, we need to think about how the input has to relate to the members of the output. So in a mapping diagram, it just had arrows. We just need to check, does each input only go to one output? To do this, just look for unique input values. One, it only shows up there, so it only goes to two. Two, doesn't show up anywhere else, it only goes to four. Three, doesn't show up anywhere else, only goes to six. Four, only goes to eight. Each input goes to exactly one output, so this is a function. Compared to not a function, if we check, one goes to two. That's okay. But we see another one here. It goes to four. This would be like in a mapping diagram saying that one went to two and one went to four. The input went to more than one output. Not a function. It's also no good here with three and six. Three went to six and three went to eight. So again, another input that went to more than one output. One corresponded to two and four. Three corresponded to both six and eight. When an input goes to more than one output, it is not a function. It needs to go to only one thing. Example two, identify functions using tables. Determine whether the relation shown in the table is a function, explain. So again, we're given a table. We have our inputs and our outputs. So if we check negative two, it goes to four. If I look closely here, do I see any other negative twos? I don't. So negative two only goes to four. Now I have positive two. It also goes to four. But if I look, there are no other twos. So two only goes to four. Negative three only goes to nine and three only goes to nine. If this was a mapping, we'd have all four of our inputs. So negative two, positive two, negative three, positive three. And then our outputs, we only have four and nine. It's okay if two things point to the same output as long as they're not pointing to two different outputs. So when we check, are there any inputs that correspond to more than one output? No. They correspond to the same thing, but that's okay. This is a function because each input only corresponds to exactly one output. Check your understanding. Determine if the relation shown is a function, and then explain. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. This is not a function because we have a two here and a two here, but this two goes to three and this two went to four. So the same input, even though it showed up in a different spot, went to two different outputs. So this would be not a function. Let's learn. Identify functions using graphs. The ordered pairs of a relation can be graphed on the coordinate plane. So we saw them as mappings and in tables. Remember, we can write them as ordered pairs and then we can just graph those as coordinates. If you have a graph, you can use what's called the vertical line test to determine if it is a function. So how the vertical line test works, if you move a vertical line or something that's vertical from left to right, it cannot pass through more than one spot on the graph. So that might be just a single coordinate point or it might be a line as shown here. If it ever goes through more than once, it is not a function. So to perform this vertical line test, you have a pencil or a pen, something probably with you. You can just take it and move it to the left or the right. And if it ever crosses more than once, it is not a function. So here I can see no matter where I put this pencil, it never crosses the graph more than once. So this line would be a function. So again, if I move it, no matter what, it's only crossing ever at one point. So here it crossed the line at one point. If I move it a little bit farther, it crossed the line again at one point. This means that the input 
corresponds to exactly one output. So again, this would be a function. If we look at this type of graph and we try to perform the vertical line test, we can see when we move it, there are places where the graph crosses more than once. This means that it is not a function. So if I'm thinking about my coordinates here, I had, let's say, a coordinate at negative 1 and 4. Down here, I have a coordinate at negative 1 and negative 2. I have the same input, my same x value, but it went to two different y values or two different outputs. So this would not be a function. When we see this, it just means that our input corresponded to more than one output. For the following graph, refer to the talk about it on the side of your page. The talk about it says, before performing the vertical line test, make a conjecture as to whether or not the graph shown is a function. Explain your reasoning. Then perform the vertical line test with a pencil to test your conjecture. Pause the video and predict if you think this is a function and would it pass the vertical line test. Hopefully, without using the vertical line test, you're saying that it is a function. And if you used the vertical line test, you could see no matter where that your pencil goes, it's only ever going to cross through it one time. And these lines is another way you can quickly do the vertical line test. Just draw a bunch of vertical lines. Look for places where it might cross more than once. Our vertical line test, it only crosses the graph ever exactly at one point. So each input corresponds to exactly one output. This is a function. Take time to pause and reflect. Are you ready to move on to the example? If yes, what have you learned about functions that you think will help you? If no, what questions do you still have? How can you get those questions answered? Pause the video now, write down your thoughts. Example three, identify functions using graphs. Determine whether the relation shown in the graph is a function. Explain. So here we're given a bunch of dots. They're not connected like they were in the learn, but we can still use the vertical line test in the same way. So here, I'm just gonna draw some vertical lines. If I draw one here, it only goes through one point, it's okay. If I draw one here, it only goes through one point, that's okay. If I draw one here, it went through there, looks like down here I have one point it went through and another point that it went through. I can check over here, but we can see this is not a function because the input of two corresponds to more than one output. Down here we have two as our input with an output of negative three, up here, we have input of two, but an output of positive three. Two went to two different things, not a function. Check your understanding. Determine whether the relation in the graph is a function. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said this is a function. Each input only corresponds to exactly one output. Vertical line test, that one only went through one spot. That one only went through one point. That only went through one point. That only went through one point. I can check going down a little farther. Didn't get there. That one only goes through one point. Each place only went through one coordinate. This is a function. Example four, identify functions using graphs. Determine whether the relation shown in the graph is a function. Explain. So again, since it's graphed, we can use the vertical line test. Does the vertical line ever pass through more than one point? I can scan and see there's no place where one part of the graph is above the other. I can keep just going through my vertical line test. There is no place where the vertical line ever crosses more than one point in the same vertical line. So this is a function because each input then would only correspond to exactly one output. Check your understanding. Determine if the relation in the graph is a function. Explain. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said this is not a function. There's plenty of places where one of the inputs has more than one output. Depending on where you go, starting like right here, it has one, two, three places this input goes to three different outputs. And then another one, this one has three. Over here, it only goes through one, but if it ever 
goes through more than one place, it is not a function. So this went through three different outputs, not a function.